All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Today we're talking about gym showers, school bungalows, girl fights, and the gum that goes squirt. <laughs> So before we jump in to all the good stuff we have here on this episode, uh, I did want to mention, Chris, that we got a a little bit of a correction from one of the folks that's listening in on the podcast, uh, a person that uh, I went I used to go to school with, and uh, they corrected us. They said that in the first episode we talked about the gum that mm-hmm. had that liquid center, right. uh, that 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 gooey stuff that kind of was supposed to freshen up your breath there. And uh, we accidentally referred to it as Aquafresh, but I've been corrected, Chris. Aquafresh was actually a toothpaste. Ah. And it had three things. Remember, it was swirled with three different colors. And, Correct. And that's because, Chris, it was a whitener, a brightener, and a breath freshener. Um, and I, I'd like to take a moment and uh, reach out to the audience. If you could get back to us and let me know what the difference is between a whitener and a brightener, that would be that would be very helpful. I have no clue what the how they differentiate. Apparently, oh. your teeth can be bright without being white. I think <laughs> they can be bright yellow. I would think maybe. I feel like we're going back to the lip gloss thing, right? It's moisturizing and it's also making it shiny. I, I don't know. Somewhere in there is the uh, is the answer. But the gum that we were specifically talking about, apparently that was called Freshen Up. Freshen Up Freshen Gum. Up. And, and uh, as with so many things, Chris, I have all these jingles and theme songs that are permanently stuck in my brain. And so it went something like this on TV. Freshen your breath with Freshen Up. Freshen Up. The gum that goes squirt. Love that squirt. I'm not joking. That was the actual. (laughs) I'm processing all of it right now. I'm trying to think. Somebody signed off on love that squirt for a commercial. (laughs) I I don't know if it makes out on the air waves this this time around. It it was a more innocent time. Uh, But that that obviously did not stop uh, a lot of my friends from making the obvious uh, middle school junior high school joke of um, what the squirt really was. I think we were really kind of obsessed with freshness overall back in this time. Because <laughs> yes. again, and obviously in this day and age, we, we try to, you know, we don't try to see many commercials and we try to fast forward to through them if, if they exist at all. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's as much emphasis on, on being fresh uh, and freshening <laughs> yourself. That's right. I think maybe it's implied that we should always be fresh. Right. That's right. Anyway. That's right. It's good to know. We had commercials <laughs> focusing on freshness. Back in the 70s, it was, hey, you gross, smelly pig. How about thinking about freshness for a second? Yeah. Nowadays, it's just sort of implied. And by the way, that is an excellent point about commercials because um, about four years ago, when my wife and I decided to finally do away with cable TV, and now we're basically just a streaming family, uh, it was so wonderful to not have to ever see another mother effing commercial ever again. I can't nowadays, if I happen to be at someone else's house or I'm watching one of those Amazon shows where they're still going to try to sneak a commercial in, I get incensed. I can't even tell you how cranky and grumpy and instantly angry I get if somebody tries to make me watch a commercial. You mean you miss, you don't miss the days of mom? Do you ever not feel fresh? I mean, that was an actual commercial, but I get I get your point. I yeah. mean, why do you want to watch commercials when you don't have to? Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, obviously, I think a lot of our formative years, though, I don't know if I'm the same person I am today without commercials. I'm probably better, but maybe I'm not. Well, no. And, and by the way, to be fair, back in the 70s and 80s, a commercial break was about 60 seconds, you know, maybe a minute and a half. They maybe had time for... Three commercials, maybe four. That was pretty outrageous to have four commercials, uh, as opposed to today when they, uh, you know, they routinely will make you watch 12 to 15 commercials at any given break. So F commercials permanently. I'm out. Screw it. Stream. Now, uh, speaking of freshen up, though, uh, I I realized in looking back at the, uh, the first few episodes here, Chris, that one of the themes, it didn't even occur to me, is this notion of things getting softer or mm-hmm. somehow more pliable. Right. And uh, let me explain what I mean. I, I, I remember we talked a lot about Levi's blue jeans, mm-hmm. right? That that uh, started out in the store as uh, starched 
and I- impossible to wear. As you pointed out, they stood up by themselves and you had to wash Itchy, them about a hundred times to get them soft, right? And if have them fade. Later on, uh, eventually in the 80s, you could get jeans that were already soft and already dyed or faded, right? Free wash. And that was a big deal. And then we talked about the boogie board, right? Before that, it was just this piece of styrofoam that would break. It was stiff. And the amazing thing was they got flexible and soft, mm-hmm. and that became the thing. Um, gum, right? Obviously, Bubblicious, Bubble Yum, Freshen Up, amazing. They now somehow had soft bubble gum. And then finally, we talked about fins, you know, the kind of fins you use in the water, obviously, and they used to be stiff and and just made out of hard plastic. And those became flexible and everybody loved them. And then I think you were mentioning something else, right? Yeah. The the cookies. Food. Oh, yeah. Cookies. I mean, it was yeah, like yeah. And, and it was like they had, I don't know, soft batch or something like that, because this is supposed to this is supposed to emulate the fact that, oh, these are fresh out of the oven. And it's like even though they're out of a package off of a shelf from a store produce god knows when but because they were soft right you know and a soft cookie like that was supposed to be good but at the same time it's like but if you got a soft oreo no that was bad because that was a stale (laughs) oreo that's right good right you didn't want a soft you know chip right but hey if you got these soft cookies made by some freaking elf who lived in a tree that was supposed to be they're good they're soft okay now he's doing a a very uh subtle poll there that was uh what the keebler the keebler Keebler elves elves. yes little elves that lived in a tree um that's right and and i remember it kind of blew our minds when we had vending machines where you could get a couple of cookies in a little bag and you're right. right. They had somehow now become soft cookies and not hard cookies. By the way, they tasted just as stale, just as shitty, but somehow the softness was something that we all craved, I guess. Right. So how do you know when the soft cookie is stale? Is it hard then? I mean, I don't know. It goes in the opposite direction. And could it be that it was just a genius ploy by the manufacturer to say, Hey, these are awesome because Technically, they're stale as hell, but no one's going to know because softness is what we're actually selling here. Softness, right? Softness and freshness. Again, there pulls us right back to we want to be fresh. We want everything to be fresh. Well, I guess I guess that's the theme though back then, right? One right. one marketing guy came up with soft gum, and then a bunch of other people caught on and said, "Hey, we should soften up our product." I think that's what people are looking for. In fact, I would argue that fabric softener became a much bigger thing back in the uh, '80s. Right with with Snuggles, the uh, the the softness bear, the or satanic whatever. bear, right? Who was just a little bit creepy, but hey, if a bear thinks it's soft, <laughs> then obviously it's soft. Because when I think of bears, I think of softness, right? Doesn't everybody? Right. No, of course they're synonymous. Absolutely. Right. right. Now another thing uh, that you and I were talking about uh, off air, if you will, was back in school. Right. We, of course, talked earlier about the injuries that would take place. Everybody was always injured. Everybody always had a broken this or a broken that. Um, But what led to a lot of injuries was, in fact, the famous school fight. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, you guys, if you weren't around in the 70s uh, or even the early 80s, you really missed out because, Chris, am I wrong? Was it at least once a week that there was an epic fight that was that was about to take place? It seemed like once a week. Maybe there was a rumor of a fight and maybe there was a recap of a fight that you missed. But either way, you were excited about that fact that somebody was fighting, physically fighting over something. Whereas right. now it would be obviously things are much different and those kind of things are not even tolerated and people no. could end up getting thro- but yeah. thrown. And again, and I'm not trying to minimize anything, but yeah, loved a good school fight. Well, nowadays it's uh, it's zero tolerance, and if you're caught being a bully or instigating a fight, you know, allegedly that has serious repercussions. I remember when my son, uh, you know, this would have been in the early 2000s, was going to grade school and middle school and all that. Um, occasionally you would see some other kid walking towards school and maybe they're wearing kind of a crazy outfit or they have purple hair or they're doing something that back in my day would have definitely set you apart, maybe even set you up for ridicule. And I remember asking my son a couple times, oh man, that kid over there seems like a nice guy, but does he get, does he get uh, ridiculed a lot and made fun of? Mm -hmm. And the look on my son's face of what the hell are you talking about? He, he literally couldn't even understand why somebody would ever do that to somebody else. I'm like, well, don't you guys have fights that break out, surely? And he's like, huh? What? Fights? Are you serious? Like, I heard of one one time, but no, no, we don't have fights. So, um, but again, back in our day, 
it did seem like it was a giant event. Now, guy fights, guy fights were a very different, uh, a different animal altogether, right? Because two guys, uh, that was what we're going to go meet. Uh, this afternoon at what four o'clock? I don't know. Or it was after school. Yeah, it was by the bike racks or up on the field, and it was and and it was sort. Of, they had a built up build up to it, right? And in a sense, and there was a lot of posturing, and again, and maybe it didn't even come off. Maybe it it became you know, I hate to say. It, disappointing if you <laughs> right, really yeah, expected yeah. if you were expecting to see like a yeah. heavyweight fight or something like that right they were again sometimes they were good sometimes they were not but again they came up with a they, they had almost like an event like stand, status of yeah so and so jimmy is going to fight john right after school that's and right boy you don't want to miss that now the opposite of that was the girl fight Ooh, and girl the girl fights, fights yeah. and girl fights were much different um, in the sense that number one, they were they were kind of organic. It's like you didn't know they were going to happen. You didn't. They were not appointment viewing in the sense. That there's a girl fight up on the field. You know, after school, um, they would pop up in the hallway in front of the That's library. Right. That's right. Or outside, you know, outside a classroom. That's right. Um, so you would crawl across broken glass, or you would run a you know a hundred yard dash in about five seconds to get to a girl fight. And there was a couple of reasons on that. Yeah. Number one, because of the, the proximity, because of where they were, they weren't going to last very long. Somebody was going to come along and break up that girl fight. And <laughs> so, you know, true. so, so you want to make sure you, you didn't miss it. Um, number two. And again, the girls, there was no posturing. There was no, you start it. No, you start it. No, you start it. Oh, right. There was not, there was fights with boys had an element of fear. You could tell at least one of the participants didn't really want to do it. <laughs> right. That's and I right. can remember fights where literally someone would push one of the kids into the other ones to get the fight actually into the other one to get it actually started. Whereas a girl fight, they got right into it. They were calling names. They were cursing. <laughs> they were scratching. They were pulling hair. Right? There was a lot more, a lot of more, you know, just sort of, I don't know, potential in a girl fight. And then and again, it might last 40 seconds. And in that 40 seconds, they both might have got in three or four blows and a hair pull and a scratch and a calling each other something that, you know, hey, not not wasn't a term of endearment. But again, they were different. They were on a different level. They were probably a little more rare, too. And that's well, they came around less frequently. And that's why you appreciated them. So I much. totally agree. And it is so funny. You're right, because when you look back at the guy fights, it was much more it, it was almost like. You're right. It's almost like um, a, a boxing match or a UFC fight is today. You, you're absolutely correct because some of them, they went kind of long and it was a full on fight. And, and definitely you didn't know who was going to win. But most of them, I would argue, were very disappointing. Right. It's really just two guys circling each other. You started it. Well, you started it. No, you go. You throw the first punch, man. You throw the first punch. And and what you could really see was most of the time, Chris is absolutely right. It's two guys that really were really pushed into it, right. mostly by their friends and yes. by peers who desperately wanted to, to create a Coliseum event with two gladiators. And usually the participants were just like reluctant at that point. Whatever it was they were pissed about was no longer even an issue. And they're both just like, how can we get out of this? Right. So wholly unsatisfying. Yeah. Whereas a girl fight yeah. again, it was it was fast. It was furious. <laughs> and it was almost 100 percent worth it. And again, I don't know what that says about me or you back then. I'm, I'm sure there may be somebody out there listening, thinking, you know, questioning our perspective, <laughs> right. but hey, no doubt and, there. Um, and again, our perspectives change. And again, I don't know. I don't ever watch. I, I, I don't watch UFC or anything like that. Right. I do know that women do it just like women box. And, you know, again, it's probably the same thing. Well, you had you had such a good point in that. I think the the emotions and the anger and the F this, uh, it was much more visceral and much more honest and, and, and sincere with women where um, they're not going to wait around to stage this thing. We're not going to do this at four o'clock by the bike racks. Mm -hmm. I'm pissed at you right now. This is happening right now. So you're right, Chris. If there was a girl fight, it was definitely something that you had to be in proximity of. Or you were probably going to miss it, right? Because right. all that, all that, uh, all that uh, energy was going to be expended now, not at three o'clock, right? And right. and right. the other thing about, at least in guys' minds, you guys, the 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 girls had a lot more potential weapons at their disposal, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, because you had hair that you can pull. Yes. Uh, you definitely potentially had nails. You could scratch right, that guys didn't have, and and let's not forget. 
the jewelry, mm -hmm. right? There, there's going to be a <laughs> necklace you can yank on. By God, the the age old earring, oh, a ring you can punch somebody with. Oh, maybe. the ring, you know? the, the the earrings. Oh man, don't even start me on the earrings. So, um, now now for those of you that think that uh we're uh, horrible people for talking about this, uh, it, it, in every single situation, it was a skirmish. Uh, nobody ever got seriously hurt. I mean, maybe with the guys, somebody might have broke a nose or something, but Bloody nose. Uh, we are not talking about people literally murdering each other. Right. Uh, and at the same time, I think it shows <laughs> those two girls that were fighting wanted to fight. They weren't they weren't, you know, caving into peer pressure. They weren't talked into it. If they didn't want to fight, they wouldn't fight. Whereas right. the boys felt they were compelled to fight. They were getting questioned if they didn't fight. So again, right, right, you know that whole girls mature faster than boys. Yeah. Hey, you saw that right there because these girls, you know, made a decision on their own. They don't play it on their own. Yeah, they do not and play. Like, I'm doing this That's because right. I want to do it, not because my friends are telling me I had to do it because of some indiscretion at gym class. I'd like to bring in one more interesting dynamic into the uh, school fight which is what I like to call the underdog, the the surprise match where mm -hmm. you had somebody who in the guy world appeared to be pretty formidable, right? right? Either they were muscular or they were one of, one of those dudes that matured very early and already had hair under his armpits when he was six years old. Right. And everybody just thought of as un, undefeatable. Muscle and tone. occasionally one of those guys would stumble across a wiry super angsty scrappy insane nerd who would absolutely just surprise the crowd and suddenly turn into a freaking tornado a furious uh you know ball of fists that would completely shock <laughs> and stun the uh the uh, goliath right and uh those were always so interesting when one of those guys would connect early on in the fight and the dude that was supposed to be you know that everyone assumed was going to win ended up kind of having to back down or in one case yeah. i i noticed even cry and go home mm. <laughs> so uh and i think i think the same goes for uh you know the girl fights which would be a lot of times you had i guess what would be considered the tough girls that that ran in certain circles right. and maybe i don't know what made them so tough but they were kind of the the mean girls or the tough girls and then, man, every once in a while, they would pick on someone who was a little bit quiet, introverted, a little mousy, and big effing mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. But you know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the fights seem to have started usually with some kind of an incident that took place in gym class, right? Overall, gym class was at least the beginning, right? Was somewhat traumatizing. And I know we talked a couple episodes back, like you know going to sixth grade camp and that sort of trauma of like having to change clothes or take showers or share bathrooms with with your friends but also total strangers yeah but that was for a week right and you there was a lot of ways to work around that but one of the things again you're, you're starting gym class and the trauma of you're going to have to change a couple times right because you had to change into your gym clothes and then you had to go have, you know, go go play out in the field or right, go right. do the six minute jog walk or any of these weird things, right? <laughs> and then absolutely That's right. and then didn't have to go back and get out of your gym clothes. And before you got you couldn't change, even though let's face it, you probably weren't that sweaty. How I mean, how bad could it be? You had to change. You had to take a shower and again in front of the rest of your class yeah. and other guys not in your class. Um, and it wasn't, there was no sort of, there was this structure. There was a kid who was in a cage, right? At least at our school. And he would basically be handing out towels. Oh, that's right. And he I was, and again, that. That, he was, that was one of his elective was to be like, you know, gym class monitor or whatever, which I always thought was a little bit bizarre when you think about it. So you have to go and pretend you'd have to run you have to go and pretend to shower and then you have to get a towel. And the reason you had to do that is you had to get that towel because that was the only way you got out of got, literally oh, got out because right. the, the coach was waiting. You had to toss in your towel yeah. to get you. Now, again, they weren't watching your shower thing. I don't think. And there, no one was. But you had to go in, pretend to shower, get yourself wet, get a towel, go change and turn in the towel. And again, it was just traumatic for so many reasons. And I think, let's face it, we're all in, in different throes of puberty. It's like, you don't want to be naked in front of the other kids. I can always remember thinking, God, please, God, don't let me think of 
I don't know, Barbara Eden or da <laughs> Daisy Duke at the wrong time because that's the last thing I need uh, right yeah. now because then your yeah. life would be over. Yeah, it would um, be over. It would and be over. so again, it was like, it's, like I said, it was traumatic. Everything, you know, gym class, at least at that time, at least the first couple of years and, you know, to, to learn to get to be able to do that and to have to change and to have to shower and then to have to change again. Um, yeah. It was something that, let's face it, is a little bit strange. It's just such the, it's such a weird policy policy that they came up with somebody said on the on the school board these kids are going to get sweaty enough that they have to shower and mandatory we can't have smelly kids in uh, third or fourth period it's just we can't have that so we need these kids to all get naked in front of each other and take showers and again you guys may think that we're we're making too big a deal out of it but seriously man uh for for chris and i sixth grade uh, was the end of elementary school or grade school back then. And seventh grade was the beginning of what we call back then junior high school. Not middle and, school. Uh, right. And I think we middle school or something now. But I remember, Chris, the summer after graduating from sixth grade, I was so psychologically traumatized thinking that I'm going to have to get naked in front of a bunch of dudes. And it was really nothing more than just when have I ever done that before? That's very strange. <laughs> and is this, this is going to be horrible. And I just kept thinking, why, why are they making us get naked in front of other people? It just makes no sense, but I, that's what they did. That's what happened. And everyone, once you, once you experienced it for the first time, uh, having a shower in front of a bunch of dudes, uh, the one thing that I guess was kind of cool and comforting about it was you instantly saw the expression on everyone else's face and knew that they were all thinking the exact same thing. Everybody was uncomfortable. Nobody wanted to be in there. And everybody was like, Jesus Christ, just get me out of here as quick as I can and give me my towel so I can get the F out of here. At it, least that's my impression. It's almost like, could there have been a more inopportune time to have to start doing this, right? <laughs> if you're at that age, totally. if, if you're a younger kid, maybe you don't think about this kind of thing, right? Little kids don't have that sort of insecurity. They don't have those concerns. They don't seem to think of it as one way or another, right? right? right. But you're at that point in time now, when you're concerned about everything else, oh, guess what? Let's let's go to gym class and, and let's shower in between. And, and by the way, you might compare this to something like later in adult life going into a gym and showering at the gym in front of other dudes like who cares why does that matter but let, let's 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 take it for what it is at the gym you're not then going to sit in a classroom for two hours <laughs> with those guys and compete for the same uh, affections of the women that are at the school and and live with them at the same, uh, you know, high school or middle school uh, indefinitely for the next seven or eight years of your life. Right. These are people you're never going to see again. And to Chris's point, to say that people's bodies were at various stages of development was an understatement, right? Uh -huh. You had people that were still had bodies where they were very <laughs> underdeveloped, to put it to put it kindly. Uh, and then other dudes, as I mentioned before, that looked like they're already 37 years old, yes. right? They just, they already had all the stuff you need. And it was just such a, uh, I guess, such an unfair uh, dichotomy of, uh, you know, whatever. It just seemed weird. It's like, hey, kids, we know you're insecure. We know you have low self-esteem. <laughs> we know you're trying to now find get naked. your way yes, and become a, a, you know, a young adult. But hey, you're going to have to do this first. So it just seemed... And again, you talk about the gyms now. Those people are there voluntarily. Voluntarily. We were not Thank there. You. Right? So yeah. we were, you know, so again, that's where it just became, you know, just something that you chalk it up. We laugh now, but it's still pretty fresh in my memory because all the details we share, you know, but so many of those different things about... <clears throat> that era because the gym itself yeah and it wasn't even really gym right? right there was actually you know in that case there's really are no gyms it's called gym class uh but essentially you know everything about that era um classrooms and technology you know you <clears throat> if you got a class in an actual classroom you scored as opposed to having a classroom in this sort of portable boxy aluminum trailer oh, and by the way let's not let's not underscore that Back then, you guys, 
schools very oftentimes didn't even have buildings. When, when a school wanted to expand or they had more students, they wouldn't build another structure. God, no. They would just bring in these white trailer trash bungalows that came from God knows where, probably a nuclear war test that was, you know, <laughs> they're probably from like Nevada atomic tests and they brought them in on a trailer. Anyway, yeah, we went into camp. bungalows. You, you literally felt like... <laughs> I don't know. You felt like it was almost felt like you were in a, a camp of some kind, like a prisoner camp. And, you know, the first day of school when you got your schedule and you saw, oh, room 103 and room 206, and it's like, damn it, B8. My math <laughs> class is in a bungalow. Right. And yeah. so, again, there's no heat. No. There's no air conditioning. No. You know, everything. So, I mean, so you'd sweat or you'd shiver. There was something about it that felt, yeah, a little bit. And again, I, the safety standards, I, I don't know how, what kind of, you know, safeguards a bungalow had, how easily collapsible it would have been in the event. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. You know, collapsible. The, the, That's was, an understatement. You know, the escape route was this one little door down the through, you know, a few steps. Um, and it was just the most, you know, and so, again, if you had more than one or two classes in a bungalow, the bungalow, yeah. you know, I mean, again, that was junior high. You know, I yeah. remember, though, in, in elementary school, yeah. having you're in a bungalow, again, like having a bungalow for the entire plus, year. Plus, the, was a the bungalow was usually a trek of some kind, too. Uh -huh. Like, you had to go out there the, to the bungalow. It was on the perimeter of the campus. And, and I'm sorry, was the bungalow on cement pads or yeah. uh, next to a bunch of greenery and flowers and, uh, and, and landscaping? No, it was on decomposed granite, dirt, right? right? And, and every time you walked in, what hit you in the face? The overwhelming smell of mold, sweat, and fear. That's all it was. It just smacked you. You're just like, God, that is the worst. Mixed together. And yeah, like you said, out there on the dirt, I remember back and forth, you know, going back and forth and maybe it's like, why, why are my zips so dirty? It's because I had to walk to a bungalow from an actual, I'm sorry, you know, did you say your zips? My zips. You what know, are, what are shoes, zips again? Zips were like, you know, they were shoes, had a little Z, instead of a stripe, they had a, oh, they had a, and you got them from like God. Tom McCann or Kenny Shoes there or something like that. Prior to before oh, when you could actually gosh. get into that next level of your first pair of Nikes. Now I had zips wow. for I don't know how long. Zips. And, um, you know. It's it's that was just kind of a thing. That is a so, that is a dirty deep, zips. deep deep cut, Chris. Well done, Thank you. sir. Thank wow, you. the zips. Yeah, bungalows, man. Uh, absolutely, just the worst. Bungalows were not exactly again because right, and we all remember <laughs> they were very low tech at at their core, right? So again, what do we have? You know, all the technology again back those when we watched a film, right? And what, we watch an actual film. Right, where you had to haul a projector, oh, yeah. go to the AV room, oh, yeah. and get, and then again, I think remember getting those those projectors up the steps yeah. of a bungalow, um, <laughs> these big carts, right? And then you'd get in there, and you'd have these giant spools Spool, of yeah. film, well, reels, so some yeah. reels, yes, yeah. and you'd yeah. have to thread it yeah. like you were a freaking projectionist. You, you were know, a projectionist. Well, what do you, you mean were, like right, you were a projectionist? Right. You were watch, a projectionist. Just to watch Johnny Tremaine or something like that. <laughs> and I think in the sense, when you look at it, where now it's like, and it, it was it was an ordeal just to Dude, watch a film. You're right? killing me. Between Zips and Johnny Tremaine, you just blew out a section of my brain well, that I haven't activated in, you know, oh my God, Johnny Tremaine. Right. Oh yeah, that was yeah. a classic. Right. You know, so, so again, the projectors, the film strips, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. The overhead projectors. This is, it's a miracle we learned anything in the sense because. <laughs> but no, what did we learn though? Look back at those, those films we saw. So random. I don't, I don't understand the learning value of anything that they showed us back then. It was such a random hodgepodge of weirdness, right? I'm Joe's heart. Right. Or, or just, I don't know. It just, it just seems so strange that I, it was obviously mostly the teachers just like F this, I'm taking a break today. Right. I mean, that's, exactly. Right? And especially if you had a substitute yeah. or a sub oh, God. and if you Guaranteed. had a sub yeah. and if you weren't changing, you know, desks with your friends. So I'm Jeff and he's Chris. Well, cause boy, we were really funny that way. <laughs> right. right. Sure. So you're changing desks or changing names with your friend and we got a sub, which means we're not doing anything. Well, sub was right? the greatest thing of all. Right. We they were all excited, excited because, yeah. Like, yes, yeah. we got a sub. Yeah. Good. I didn't, you know, I, I'm not, I didn't do my homework. You know, of course, they're probably still going to collect it or, or something Chris, like that. Chris, how many times did you get that great feeling when you had a test that you hadn't studied for? Mm -hmm. You were super nervous about, well, if you cared about your grades, which Chris and I both did, by the way. Um, look where it got us. Yeah. But uh, we, uh, 
we, we you come in, you're super nervous because you haven't studied or you got to turn homework in or you have a report due and you didn't do it. And then you get in, the teacher's sub. not there and there's a sub. You're like, oh, sweet Jesus. Thank God it's a sub. It's that same feeling when you wake up on Saturday morning and you think you got to get up and go to school and you realize you can go back to bed. It's that same feeling of, oh, right. God, thank you, Lord. Right, right. And the sub, yeah, exactly. Not have the assignment, not have the test. Unless it was a spelling test. I could always bullshit my way through a spelling test on <laughs> sure. the skinny piece. Remember, it was for some reason always a spelling test weird. was on that skinny piece yep. of paper. You look like it you were writing like, it on a receipt. Right. It was just, yeah. <laughs> it's like, why the spelling test? Because they're trying to conserve. I don't understand why spelling tests have their own sort of paper, you know, because probably in the grand scheme of things, it probably took nope. just as much to produce nobody the does. skinny t paper yeah, as it does. did a regular paper. Um, and you hit on a point that was so funny earlier about having to take this giant metal cart that had this extremely heavy film projector on it. Probably and expensive these, and valuable. And, and the only people that were AV uh, technicians or monitors, these were school uh, students, you guys. Right. It, it wasn't like some uh, technician came in and uh, and hauled it up the stairs and ran it. No, it was always the nerdiest, dorkiest geekiest of the kids myself included um, yeah no one could see me waving my hand myself right included yeah but uh that that would um you know own this and take care of this as their responsibility and um the reason i'm laughing is because i don't recall there ever being a uh a ramp for disabled students that led into a bungalow in fact i can't even think how they got in it would go going back to our iron side conversation right. right how how did they even get in was there ever a ramp did they go to school with us? <laughs> I don't think they did. I don't think they had, again, they guys, were singled out and ostracized because they, you're right. you know. You guys, but, he's not wrong. I don't remember very many, dis I can't think of one disabled student. Right. That's so weird. I can remember a couple that had sort of little hitches to, I mean, but they well, didn't, you know. All without, of us had issues. Without naming names. Oh, come on. But they weren't yeah. full on, you know, the schools didn't have to be ADA compliant or anything like that. That is so true. Or maybe they went into, maybe they didn't, maybe if they did have a kid like, again, no, I don't remember that. They also yeah. they also probably realized, I mean, especially again, I'm talking about the 70s, that um, kids were pretty damn brutal. You guys back then, uh, political correctness, pretty much non-existent. And if you were different in any way, shape or form, if you made the mistake of wearing the wrong shoes, the wrong shirt, Zip. the wrong haircut, um, you effed up and you tried to be stylish that day and it just, man, would that go south quickly. Boy, people would just, they would, they would just jump on it like piranha. And they would remember it forever. I remember like, they, it forever. They would follow you. That's um, right. That's there right. was a girl I remember who, who for some reason, uh, you know, shaved off her eyebrows and <laughs> okay. Well, hold, hold on a second. That is a bit extreme, right? She so... shaved them off herself. No All one right. like held her down and shaved off her eyebrows. I don't think <laughs> okay. she shaved off her eyebrows when we were in like third grade and then in, in seventh grade, they still hadn't grown back. Right. Okay. So it's just like, you know, and you remember that kind of stuff. There was a girl who, you know, again, who was really sunburned one time when we were out there playing volley tennis yeah. and she ripped off this big piece of skin on her forearm and everybody was just in, we were still talking about it in eleventh grade. That's how we yeah. remembered her because it was just so. Those things, yeah. Everybody had really long memories for the worst things. I do, right? I do to this day remember a kid that, uh, for whatever reason, uh, did away with his own eyelashes. I'm not sure how that happened, Ouch. but well, but anyway, it, it was very odd. And you're right that that to this day I still can see mm -hmm. uh, that uh, eyelashless uh, uh, stare. On I can his face. I just, can see the kid who pulled, who turned his eyelids inside out. Oh God, again, which was a, was a neat thing. neat seven. By the way, that was uh, something I never attempted, but that was a big deal back then, guys. If right. you could turn your eyelid inside out and uh, for just a couple of brief moments, uh, show everybody the inside of your eyelid as you're walking around, that was uh, that was considered pretty high end. Right. Well, so many things, again, were traumatic about that time. And because in retrospect, there wasn't a lot of supervision outside of the teachers. Um, <laughs> a so lot could, of supervision. So you could get away. If you're on the field, Jesus. you could get away with a lot. Right. And I think 
and except at lunchtime when the yard duties were kind of rolling around. Oh, and they had God. their clipboards and no, maybe they had a no, whistle and no. something. They didn't command a lot of respect. They're always somebody's, you know, somebody's mom or somebody volunteer. I don't know why you would volunteer for you, that. You, you, you guys, you, once again, if you go back to these schools that Chris and I grew up in, it's mostly dirt, granite fields, very little landscaping, these bungalows that, again, were more like bunkers. And uh, yard duty, to Chris's excellent point, was typically a mom that volunteered. But what were they? They would go around like a damn German prison guard, right? And they would they had a clipboard in mm -hmm. their hand. And, it was and they were constantly making notes like they were reporting people. And they were observing and mm -hmm. reporting. And it was it, <laughs> it felt uh, very strange. It did. It, it felt at times like you were in a um, minimum security prison setting uh and uh or juvenile hall or something and maybe the key word here is yard duty there was no yard yard duty maybe there was no yard there was no lawn but that was the, their name yard right duties. right yeah. but then again but there was a yard like like just was like a prison yard right maybe that's what like Folsom prison was like or Shawshank I don't know and they say something that happened out in the yard maybe that's where they got it and I and again to you know with all due respect to them they had it was a pretty thankless job because all they got was like a lot of lit from some kids that weren't <laughs> theirs, right? They weren't teachers, so they didn't have that same level of where they could even maybe they could write a name down. They didn't even know that kid, right? And the sense like they were there to maybe make sure that nobody killed each other or no girl fights broke out because the boy fights weren't going to be you know after school and the yard duty were long gone. But it's like they were there to or to ensure that nobody set something on fire. I don't know what but, else they were supposed to do. But Chris, I can't even count how many times that me and my friends were kind of up to quote unquote no good uh during recess and uh it felt a lot like Steve McQueen in The Great Escape, you know. We had lookouts you, you tell me when the yard duty isn't looking so that I can, I don't know what we're doing, digging tunnels out pencil of the fighting, I have no idea. I didn't get <laughs> yeah. trouble for having a pencil fight. Pencil fighting. Okay, let's go into that for a second. Pencil fighting, the most harmless activity on the planet. Chris, it escalated to such a level that they finally banned it, and we still to this day don't know what the drama was. So Chris, explain to everybody what a pencil fight pencil is. Pencil fighting, and, and for most of us at the time, the cool pencils were the NFL pencils that you could get from the machine or the student's Okay, store. so we had these vending machines. Right, and these pencils, and they were, and first thing about <clears throat> the first reel of a pencil fight is that you, that had to be a, it wasn't a sharpened pencil. <laughs> it's, it's like fight club, like fight rule club. number one. Rule number one, had to be a pristine pencil, you know, was not sharpened, it had to have a flat, you know, a flat edge. Um, it was brand new. Brand and new. essentially you would hold it between, you know, between your, 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 your index between your two fingers, you make peace signs yeah. and hold it between your fingers on both hands. Yeah. And essentially, I would hold my pencil out in front of Jeff. Off this is up. not a euphemism. Yeah. Hold the pen and where Jeff would come up with, hold his pencil. Mine's horizontal. He would hold his vertically and pull it back to get a little bit of tension, snap it down and try to break my pencil. I'm just now, trying to snap his pencil in half and he's offering it up to me, which is the rule, right? You have right, to do that. right. Yeah. And then essentially, if my pencil doesn't break, right. then it's reversed. Jeff holds his that so, way. So the rules are very simple. Right. The rules are very simple, you know, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, maybe essentially, and I don't know, I don't think, and, and maybe it lasted two or three of those. <laughs> yeah. They weren't, they weren't long. No. They were like, you know, definitely, you know, they were longer than me sometimes in a girl fight, but I, I much would, shorter than a boy fight. I really loved when two people that were really shitty at pencil fighting would get right. into a fight because it was just, it could last 10 minutes mm -hmm. and you would just see wood chip after wood chip <laughs> after wood chip. And then it got really interesting. It's like, come on, man, who's going to mm -hmm. win? I mean, people were almost taking bets when right. it lasted more right. than five minutes. So you'd gather around and watch a pencil fight like you were watching a real fight. <laughs> and right. then eventually somebody would win. Yeah. And then that would, and, you know, a yard dude would no come prize. and break it up. No prize. It was just sort of like pride. And the funny part is, I can remember going, oh, this is a good pencil. So this is my pencil fighting. Because like, yeah. so, it was just like, it was so far, it was, you know, undefeated. It was three and right. out. Right. right. And there was something about this pencil. But when, in retrospect, we, we bought those pencils. We own those there pencils. Are pencils. We yeah. didn't take them out no. of, you know, the supply we closet. We didn't steal them. From we the, didn't yeah. steal them. That's right. And, but it was banned. We were just entertaining ourselves. And again, would you rather have me doing something else? Um, you guys, to say that the yard duties eventually caught on is an understatement. Once those yard duties caught on to the fact that people were, God forbid, 
fighting with pencils, mm -hmm. they they shut that down real quick. Right. We won't have that on these on these grounds. There right? was like memos, oh. you know, and announcements and everything. They, else. they never could give us a reason, right? Uh, and I remember the big scandal, Chris, at our at our personal uh, junior high school, which was Pershing Junior High School uh, in uh, down there in San Diego and San Carlos. Um, was we caught a guy. He was the best pencil fighter there was. <laughs> and guess what he did, Chris? How did he cheat? Um, His pencil. Had rubber cement on it? No. No, it wasn't like a pencil it. at all. Okay. It was just a piece of goddamn metal <laughs> that he had painted to look like a pencil. That and I don't remember. The, the backlash. That is a deep pull. The backlash on that scandal, you guys, I can't even tell you. And really, what was the damage? A bunch of pencils. Right. But the, the pride that he had stolen from us after killing us in all those fights, man, he was... Uh, ostracized it was like time. he had corked his bat or something like that right or he had thrown put vaseline on the ball before he threw it right? exactly cheating at pencil fighting all right well looks like it's that time again another great episode holy moly my brain is <laughs> my brain is literally tired from uh from from all of those polls and all of those memories just bleeding back into my conscious so uh it's a good tired though. it is a good kind of tired so chris what do you think next time next time see you guys soon on the next episode 